This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Do you drive a vehicle? Then you'll find AutoCorrect helpful, especially on Coach Charlie's Tip of the Week. Listen to our podcast with me, Coach Charlie Melton, on any podcasting platform or on the MPB Public Media app. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Lacey Alexander here with Jeff Salmons from Houseworks, licensed contractor. Uh, our friend Pam Pibus, ASHI certified inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, is out today. Spring is the season where a lot of renovations and changes happen around the house, and we are here to help. If you don't know where to start this season, we have an easy spring maintenance list to get you started. Also, we look at the best practices when it comes to handing cabinets and what you need to do to get organized. So please do join the conversation with us this morning. Send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Good morning, Jeff. This weather stinks. Oh, I know. We had some hail last night you and did. some wind, let me tell you, and 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 some rain. It, it was uh, it was a little hairy. I See, today's supposed to be the bad day. I know. And yesterday, know. the sky fell out. That's right. So um, that all that to say that if you uh, if you hear us chime in with some weather alerts while we're on the air today, we're just trying to keep everybody safe. Thank you for being patient with us. Now I have a question. Okay, ask. Since Pam is not here, <laughs> does that mean we can talk about her? Yeah, <clears throat> okay, I was good. hoping I was hoping we would get to do our Pam impressions before the show was Perfect. over. Perfect. When you were gone, we talked about you. Uh, that, well, that's <laughs> that's my point. Everything everything goes full circle. It's only fair. So, so Pam, I hope you're listening. Since you're playing hooky, we will talk about you. Absolutely. I, I'm gonna miss her stories about all the animals she finds in people's homes during right. inspections. Exactly. Though. That's gonna make me sad. Uh, Jeff, like we said, it's some yucky weather this week. Uh, what phone call? Calls or fixes uh, in your <clears throat> department are common after heavy rain like this. Well, you know, we we will, I'm sure, get uh, roof uh, leak calls. We will, you know, and it was a blowing rain. Mm -hmm. So um, typically on a blowing rain, you're going to get water where you normally would not. Sure. So imagine taking a pressure washer and putting it to your front door or to your windows, <laughs> yeah. you can drive that water through those areas, mm, mm -hmm. um, you know, regardless of how well it's sealed. Jeez Louise, that's so. scary. Can you fix a leak while it's still raining? Uh, I, we do not, we will not, my company will not get on a roof if it's wet. Yeah. So, and I, and I don't recommend anyone doing that. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, the damage is done, mitigate it, the best you can with uh, buckets or whatever you have to do to mitigate that. And then when it's dry and safe, um, then we would we would get on the roof and assess damage and repair at that point. Yeah. Well, that only makes sense. You're not trying to break anybody's kneecaps. Yeah. They, they, look, when you fall off the roof, it hurts. <laughs> so. Sure it does. What are some weatherproofing 101 tips you give homeowners? Hmm. You know, it's always a good idea to keep trees and, and things of that nature, you know, as far away from the houses, as long as they're not touching the roof and rubbing on rubbing on your woodwork and your fascia boards and that type of stuff. Uh, now, last night, the storm kind of caught us off guard a little bit, but it would be a good idea to get your garbage cans and any loose items that could that could blow and cause further damage. Uh, if you could secure those would be a good tip. I got you. And I, I'm sure when when it's actually raining, it's not the time to weatherproof the home. <laughs> um, sadly, not. sadly, some of those structures need to be done prior to the storm. Well, at least now you, you know where all the uh, all your weak spots are. <laughs> yeah, right. So, <laughs> right. It's a little bit of a little bit of trial and error there. Tomorrow would be a great day to do that. Oh, Absolutely. Man, um, I think uh, I think we still got some really bad weather today. I think we're still supposed to get a little rain tomorrow, Jeff. I don't think we're out of the woods Ooh, for a while. I thought, I thought tomorrow was going to be nice. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow <clears throat> afternoon will be nice. How about that? We'll see. <laughs> we will see. 
You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Lacey Alexander here with licensed contractor Jeff Salmons from Houseworks. And if you're wondering where Pam Pibus is, we kicked her out. We, <laughs> we said we are done with you today. No, just kidding. Pam Pibus is out with an illness this morning. Um, so if you have any questions specifically for Pam, hold them till next week or send me an email. We do have some folks on the phone, Jeff, that want to ask you some questions. Uh, first caller of the morning is Nancy in Hancock County, who has questions about about plumbing and water pressure issues. Good morning, Nancy. You are on the air. Good morning. How's the weather, Nancy? Um, the rain's starting to come down. It's kind of cloudy. I don't see any funnel clouds or okay. anything like that. Yeah, because I think but y'all are under. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I think y'all are under until 930. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, what's yeah. your question? Um, a relative bought a property last year and... It was inspected, but come to find out that when you turn the faucet on in one part of the house and you have flush the toilet or have running water in another part of the house, they, there's no water pressure. You can't get any real water besides the trickle out of another faucet. Okay. okay. We, had pump, we had the well pump and all that checked out and had two different plumbers come out and say two different things. One suggested getting the pipe pressure blown out, but then another came and said, no, you shouldn't do that. It, you don't know about the condition of the pipe. The house is a slab foundation built in the 80s. Okay. All right. Uh, now. And then the other plumber. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. no, no. I'm listening. Um, the other plumber, the second one, suggested taking out all the, abandoning the slab plumbing and putting in new plumbing and taking everything overhead okay. through the roof. Through the uh, yes. I was going to suggest that. I want to ask you a couple oh. questions. Uh, are there okay. certain fixtures that you're getting plenty of water pressure to? No, it's just uniform throughout the house. Okay. Just when you turn on one, you can't turn on the rest. Uh, okay. So possibly, how how far is a water meter from the house? Um, I'm going to say not more than 75 feet. Okay. All right. Um, what it sounds like is the feed... So if that is, in fact, what the issue is, diverting the plumbing in the attic is not going to do any good. So we, I'm, I'm going to start at the source. Do we have good okay. pressure coming into the, the meter? From the, ha- from the well, yes. It's, it's a well. It's okay, a well okay. So, so we and have... We've had that. All right. Yeah, she's had that. Mm-hmm. Do, we, do we have good pressure coming out? And, and it's blocking somewhere between there and the house is what it sounds like. Something's going on. Yeah. There, um, I can't, I don't, I don't know what to say. Not I, no, 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 I understand. And it's, it's a, it's a elimination of, of issues, but I, I'm starting at the meter. And if I have to run right. a new, if I have to run a new water line, I'm going to run a new water line to the house, <laughs> see if that cures the problem. And if, if it doesn't, my next issue is to abandon that and run it in the attic. Um, it doesn't appear to be leaking into. I have a, a property up in North Carolina, and when I got when I got that property, I got a massive education on wells. Yeah, and it um, it doesn't appear to be leaking into the ground from the uh, from the well pump or from the reservoir to the house at all. Okay, it's not. Anyway, and I and I live in the house part time because I work down here sometimes. Uh, okay, um, I, then then if we feel that we're getting good pressure to the house, then I I will um, go with the second plumber, abandon the water feeds in the um, slab, move those to the attic. Uh, one other thing I would check would be um, uh, the water heater itself. Uh, is it good and clean? Is there settlement in it? You know, because your water's going to go in there first. So, they, yeah, and they seem to think one seemed to think. Well, he actually outright said, and I was there for it. it but that doesn't matter. He he outright said that he wouldn't replace the water heater without replacing the rest of the plumbing. Yeah, it made no sense. True. Yeah, and it's is the yeah. is the heater is it is it a nineteen eighties model as well? Yeah. It's very old. I don't really know. I think it's time. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's money well spent. Um, 
change out the change out the heater and and uh, move the plumbing up up in the attic. I, I, I think you're on the right the right sheet of music with that. Okay. Well, can mm -hmm. I ask one more question? Of course. Yes. Are there um, there are tools you can buy that kind of like a scope that you can put down the pipe to, to map out where things go? Aren't mm -hmm. there? Nah, I, you know, it, the the money you would have to spend to get a good enough camera to do that would be enormous. Uh, I know that your sewer can be scoped, uh, but that, uh -huh. that that takes a very expensive camera, and. Um, the thing that you're seeing on Facebook, if that's what you're talking about, I think you're wasting your money. No, I, I haven't seen anything. Okay. I just, but uh, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think, I think, um, I, I like the second plumber's uh, evaluation. I really do. Okay. Thank Alrighty. you so much. I sure. Thank you, Nancy. We hope we helped you out this morning. If, if the camera's expensive, you might as well just call pro, huh, Jeff? Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, no, you, you don't want to go buy, you know, a $5,000 sewer a scope machine i wouldn't know how to use it anyway uh <laughs> diane in clarksdale has been patiently waiting this morning uh diane has a question about water under the door after the heavy rain uh diane you are on the air tell us what your question is hey good morning good yeah, morning so my question on my issue good my morning issue is, is that when there's a when there's a heavy rain there is a water that's not a lot of water that seeps underneath the the door Yep. Uh, this door goes to the outside. Well, of course it goes. It goes to the back outside of the house. Sure. And so I've heard I've heard Pam say plenty of times that that's because that's where the water lands. Doesn't mean that's where it's coming. How it's getting in. So any insights on what could be where that water or how it's seeping through? I've tried to caulk in and around on the outside of it just in case it was getting through on the sides, but that doesn't seem to be. Helping. Yeah. What's the age? What's the age of the door? Oh, I, I bought the house a year and a half ago, and I think the house itself is about 70 years old. So let's just say the door is 20 years old. Okay, I okay. <laughs> I think I'm starting with the sweep. There's a gasket, if you will, on the bottom of the door that seals okay. seals between the bottom of the door and the top of the threshold. Um, okay. That that And, and I, I, you know, everything has a shelf life. So I think I'm getting someone out there to put a new sweep on. Um, okay. I can make anything leak with enough water pressure. <laughs> so if this is occasional, um, so it, it could be blowing rain. The, that's that's something very, very hard to control because you can't control the weather. Uh, or it is drainage that you don't have enough positive drainage away from the door meaning enough slope on the area lead, lead, leading up to the door, uh, okay. meaning water's pooling there. Um, if that's the case, you might try a shed-type awning over the door or gutters. Okay, I have, I have the gutters, but there's not an awning. Okay. okay. Um, you, you might, you might consider that if, if, uh, that, that way, what you, what you've done, you've moved that water line, you know, a couple, two, three feet away from that door. Got it. That Thank way, so if, if you had positive drainage going back to the door, you would move that line away from that door. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Diane, for calling this morning. We hope we were able to help you out with some of your post-rain woes. Um, real quick, before we continue, guys, I do want to remind everyone that parts of the state are under a tornado warning. Parts of the state are under a tornado watch. So I just, you know, I want to tell our listeners who I love very, very much to please, please, please be safe wherever you are. Um, but thank you both for calling so much. Jeff, let's keep it going with a few more questions. Let's switch over to the email side of things now let's go this is from melinda i thought this would be a good one would love for you to touch on the importance of trade schools slash trade skills and the direness of the gap in skilled technicians plumbers electricians hvac and seriously appliance repair 
Thank you for what you do. I'm a daily listener, and I even leave it on my radio for the bunny when I go to work. Wow. So you're you're Man. educating somebody's pet rabbit, <laughs> nice. Jeff. You have a very nice. important job. Wow. Well, I know that you bunny knows how to... Be careful what I say. Yeah, right, right. I don't want to upset the bunny. No, and now he knows how to fix things. So right. that's a very educated bunny. <laughs> sure. But yeah, Jeff, before before we take our second break, talk about uh, those skills, those trade skills, those trade schools, and the gap in that. Well, you know, being in the industry, I've, I've done it most of my life. Um, first of all, HVAC technician, plumber, electrician, those are very... Um, highly skilled individuals, uh, male and female, uh, and and the pay is is um, is very good mm-hmm. in those trades. Yeah. Um, r- reality, we don't have enough of them. Mm-hmm. We do not have enough people doing those trades. Yeah. Uh, same with masonry. Mm. That, that's uh, you know, we 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 install a lot of brick in in Mississippi, and uh, we need some young people. Uh, getting into the into the into the trades. Gotcha. Why, why do you think there's not enough? You think people are reluctant to jump into like a hard labor craft, or you think people think plumbing's nasty? What do you? I think I think it's a combination of both. <laughs> okay. A combination of all the above. Yeah. You know, um, and and in a lot of sense, it is. It's uh, you know, it's physical labor. It's hard, uh, but there is a reward, and it, and mm. it's a, it's a very nice. Uh, uh, paycheck if that's what you enjoy doing. Sure. How much, let, let's say someone's listening that maybe wants to get into that trade, how much school or how much training is required before you can be uh, certified in those spaces? You know, I think that you could, uh, I, I think they have a, a year long class possibly. Mm. And then at that point you would have enough knowledge to go to work for someone. You wouldn't be a master plumber or a master electrician. Wouldn't at that own point. your own practice. But, right. but you, you would know enough at that point to where you could go to work for a master plumber, master electrician, HVAC person and, and develop your real life skills. Oh, wow. So how much, how much training did you have, Jeff? Uh, I am not a plumber. I am not an electrician. <laughs> you are a contractor. <laughs> what kind? What, so, what kind of school do contractors I, go to? I, I I had enough training to know to hire the right people there to do go. those tasks. There you go. <laughs> we had to do a little bit of math here and there, Jeff. But uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's it's a it's a great trade, and we would love to uh, uh, help young people get get into uh, those those trades. Absolutely. And, and, um, Melinda, I hope your bunny heard that entire segment. I hope the bunny can tell you when you get back from work that we answered your question. Uh, one more question, Jeff, and then we'll take our second break. I have, this is from William. I have a furnace closet with fire resistant paneling, which may have asbestos. Is this going to be a problem when we sell the house? Hmm. Um, asbestos is not a problem as long as you don't disturb it. Hmm. You had to poke the bear for yeah. it to be a problem, right? Yeah, um, and that's that's really something I, I don't think I'm qualified to answer on the radio because uh, I definitely don't want to give someone the wrong advice. Now we, we have removed asbestos siding. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a technique for that. Uh, the short story is you wear proper PPE and you wet everything down with uh, water. Mm. and encapsulate everything. It's all got to be labeled uh, in the dumpster, and everyone has to know that it is asbestos. Wow. So Just to throw it away, you got to yes, do all that. Yes, it is a process. My goodness. What does so, the water do? Uh, the water keeps the, the asbestos, like I said, if you don't mess with it, it's okay. Yeah. But when you start cutting it, uh, nailing it, or disturbing it, yeah. you get the asbestos fibers in the in the air, which... That's the damage to your lungs. So if it's in a furnace closet, the thing that's in the closet is not going to disturb the asbestos? No, uh, and it's, it's, it's a fire barrier, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this house must have some age to it. Mm, it must have. Yeah. So, William... You, I, I hope that answered the question. Yeah, right. William, we're telling you not to touch that asbestos. Absolutely. Unless you want to get a pro out there. Yeah, there there are companies that can mitigate that. And then we would put, you know, some other fire resistant fire rock or 
some other concrete board in its place. Gotcha. But the furnace itself can't disturb the asbestos. It, no, it shouldn't. Okay. It shouldn't. Okay, I got you. No. Now, if there's other if there's other conditions that, you know, someone is actually messing with that asbestos, that could be an issue. <laughs> so, William, if you asked her, you, the question, but you've already messed with it, yeah, you probably need to go get it removed by a professional that's going to label it and throw water on it, as Jeff said. Long, long process to get rid of that asbestos. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Lacey Alexander here with licensed contractor Jeff Salmons from Houseworks. Pam Pibus, our friend who is an ASHI certified inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl. She is out this morning. Uh, send her some good thoughts. She's dealing with a little bit of an illness. You are stuck with me and Jeff. It is the Lacey and Jeff show. Um, before we uh, before we ask Jeff some questions about contract work and talk about some maintenance, we do have a caller on the line. Walker in McCarley is on. Walker, good morning. You are on the air with us. Good morning, Lacey. Jeff. Uh, good morning. I have just emptied my water gauge at five uh, inches. We're getting a lot wow. of rain up in uh, McCarley, but we're on where, the ridge, so I don't have to worry about the flooding. Where, what where is that? Is weather radio, my NOAA weather radio, is only getting static. Are they down or something? Have they had a problem? Uh, not to my knowledge, but uh, that might that might be something to uh, check their website about. Uh, Walker, where is McCarley? Uh, it's near uh, uh, well, Carroll uh, Carroll uh, well, Carroll County, uh, sort of thirty miles from either Grenada or Greenwood. Okay, okay. I'm above the Delta. All our water runs down. Into I the got you, got you. Okay. Yeah, I can't answer that about the weather radio. That's out of my wheelhouse. So yeah, I, I might have heard if something was wrong with it. It may be my radio. Oh, it might be. Uh, so uh, quick, quick, uh, quick Google on my half, Walker. It says problems receiving that broadcast can be due to issues with the transmitter, the receiver, or possibly both. Um, and then they will uh, they will report outages as they go. But because the weather's so crazy, the radio may just be uh, going a little dull on you, Walker. Well, that, I've got another cabin and another radio. I'm going to go down and check that. But I'm still getting a television signal from my satellite, so it, the weather ain't that bad. All yeah. right. Well, yeah. hey, listen, you stay safe, okay? And, and and just stay alert however you can. I will. Thank you, dear. You take care. You too, Walker. Thanks, Walker. In McCarley in Carroll County. Yep. I, didn't, I didn't know where McCarley was until this moment. So, Jeff, uh, while we are on the subject of spring maintenance, um, we're just going to I'm just going to go through and ask you some stuff. Obviously, you don't want people on the roof right now. Not, no. a, not a good time. But when things are dry and it is OK to check the roof, uh, what is what are they looking for when they're checking their roof for stuff to fix? Well, OK, first of all, I don't think the homeowner or anyone in the home ought to check their own roof okay. uh, unless they are uh, qualified to do so. Okay. I mean, I think walking around on your roof, um, unless you do it for a living, is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would, I, if, if, um, uh, if it was bothering me, I would hire a qualified roofer to come do an evaluation. A lot of them will do it at no charge. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're going to look for things such as blisters. Mm -hmm. uh, blisters would be an indication that the roof is not vented properly and it's getting hot from underneath. Mm. And it's just just like it sounds. It is a blister. Mm. Uh, if you have a blister, it will be perfectly round. So they're easy to tell opposed to a hail hit. Mm. A hail hit will be more jagged. And it will also make a dimple on the uh, front side of the shingle. But on the back side of the shingle, it will also make an indention. That's a good indicator that you have had, you've got hail and not blisters. Mm. Another way to see if you have hail is if the soft metals on your roof, such as your um, heater stack, uh, um, both furnace and uh, water heater, uh, it's soft metal, and those will dent as well. Gotcha. So that's a pretty good indicator. If those are dented, then you can assume that you've had some hail. Now, was it bad enough? Was it 10 hits in 100 square feet? You know, that's we're getting a little technical, but I, I would recommend hiring a certified 
uh, roofer or roofing company to inspect my roof. Is there anything you can see from the ground that should alert you? Um, you can see some things that don't look right. Sure. This, this doesn't look right to me, so I think I'm going to hire someone to inspect it. Now, do not call your insurance company to inspect it because you do not want to file a claim if you do not have a claim. Oh, Lord. That's a whole other can of worms. Well, in when, when you call your insurance company and say, I think I have hail damage mm. because my my neighbor's getting a roof mm -hmm. and, and they, OK, do you want to file a claim, Mr. Homeowner, Mrs. Homeowner? And you say, yes, I sure would. You you have a claim at that point, whether they pay or not. It's still classified as a claim. Yeah. So you do not want claims on your record if you can keep from it. Yeah, there you go. So hire the roof guy first. Hire the, the roofing or the general contractor to assess the damage, if there is any. Mm -hmm. Make a decision at that point if we're going to involve insurance. Gotcha. So you have uh, you have strong feelings about don't get up on your roof. Uh, Absolutely. Do you, do you feel the same way about cleaning out your own gutters, Jeff? Um, that's a little safer. Uh, if you can do that on a stable ladder you know, I'm not standing on the the top portion of the ladder that is plainly states on there, do not stand on me. Uh, that's in there for a reason. Uh, but yeah, if you can use the ladder properly uh, and you're with someone else uh, in case something happens that you're not, you know, flopping in the front yard. Right. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. Waiting on somebody to come home. Gotcha. So... If you do want to try and clean out the gutter, what what are you looking for? What do you what action needs to be taken? Well, like you know, a good a good way to do it if you can <clears throat> get a water hose up there and you know get as much debris out with your hands with gloves on, get as much debris out as you can, and then take the water hose and wash it down. All right, uh, but be careful and don't 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 plug up your downspouts. Sure, and if you if you got the money and you got the time, call somebody. Go, go give um, you, I, I like that theory. Yeah, right. Give your local hire, gutter cleaner a little hi, bit of time. Hire someone that does that for a living. Sure. And uh, that will give you time to go do what you do. There, there you go. Exactly. Whatever you do for a living. Whatever you do. Yeah, there you go. Uh, folks, we're just going down the list of a spring maintenance list. Another thing you can do in, during the spring season, Jeff, is inspect the concrete. If you're taking a walk around your property to look for cracking in the driveway, walkways, or pool deck, uh, what else are you looking for when you're checking out that concrete outside? Well, he, he, here's some facts about concrete. Give it to me. Um, it's going to get hard, and it is going to crack. Okay. It's a guarantee yeah. of, of, those, of those two things. Now, with that being said, the reason, if you're wondering why those lines are in the concrete, those are control joints. We are controlling where we want the, where, where we are trying to make the concrete crack in those areas versus it cracking in just random areas. Mm. So that's why, and there's a formula um, between, um, Length, width, and thickness of concrete will determine how close those control joints are. Sure. So I'm looking for that. Uh, if if uh, if the cracks are getting large and uneven, I want to put some sort of sealant in it. I'm trying to keep the water from getting underneath that flat work. Gotcha. Uh, and then clean clean the the concrete on a regular basis. Try not to do it when it's 110. Right. Uh, you know, the, 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 the concrete acts just like we do. Um, you cool it off too, too fast. That's not good. Gotcha. So what I'm hearing is not all concrete cracks are created equal. I'm hearing that some there are potentially more dangerous than others. Maybe if they're starting to open up, let's, let's, let's keep the water from getting underneath it and causing further damage. Sure. Sure. Uh, we do have a caller on the line. Doug is calling us. He is traveling this morning. Doug has a question or a comment about roof inspection. Doug, you're on the air. What's going on? Thanks for having me. I picked the wrong day to drive to South yeah, I no bet, kidding. Yeah, I bet you um, did. Uh, I have some suggestions. If you had your roof inspected by a certified roofing contractor after a hailstorm, your adjuster said, sorry, you didn't have any damage. Your uh, co The roofing company followed that up with 43 photographs to the insurance company, and they still said no. Wow. <laughs> yeah, man. If if I had ten dollars for every time I heard that story, I'd retire. 
Um, man, that, that's, that is so sensitive. Um, wow. Um, how am I going to handle this? You, this is, this is what I think I'm going to do. Um, and the, and the roofing contractor that came out is probably 1000% correct. Uh, I think that I'm going to probably get a second opinion. Uh, then I'm going to call my insurance carrier back and I'm going to ask for a new adjuster. Well, they, they sent two different ones. So you're saying get a second opinion from another roofing contract. Yes. Yeah. Just to, just to make sure, um, or do this hire a qualified home inspector that understands hail. You know, because, you know, th there's some people that, that think a blister is hail damage, and it's not. So the difference between the hail and the blister, the blister is going to be perfectly round, just like a blister on your skin, and hail is going to be jagged like a piece of ice. Okay. So, I, man, I, I, I hate you're going through that. I've, I've uh, dealt with many, many insurance companies, and... Um, sometimes it can be very challenging. But you think a second opinion might say, I'm, like, I'm, hey, I'm, we're not just... I'm getting a second opinion from either a, another qualified roofing contractor or a home inspector. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. Take care. Yes, Thank sir. you, Doug. Be safe on the road, please. Be careful in that weather. My goodness. Wow, what a tough situation. Well, and it is. Now, you know, and I, I'm not saying either party's right, but sure. somebody is right. Right. And in, in those two scenarios, either the insurance company is right, and if that if that's the case, so be it. But if the roofer is correct, then the insurance company needs to step up to the plate and pay the claim. Absolutely. And and, and do not misunderstand me. The insurance company does not want to deny that claim. Right. They want to take care of their customers. Now, is the is the roofing inspector with the insurance company? Is he qualified to look at it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I know he. I know he's with the insurance company. Sure. So in that scenario, someone is right and someone is wrong. But a, another opinion to back up that first opinion would probably, you think, maybe implore the insurance I, company to take action. Absolutely. Yeah. And and if it comes back that it is truly hail damage, mm -hmm. um, then now I have two. Um, independent uh, roofing contractors that are telling me that I have hail damage. Yeah. So it's you versus two. So, well, <laughs> so you better pay up. I mean, you, you would do the same thing if, if uh, you know, you're getting a second opinion from your doctor. It's true. It's true. And people do that all the time. You That's know, right. it's not uncommon. You know, it doesn't mean you don't trust the first guy. Not at all. It just means that if two different trained people give you one answer, then that answer's probably got a little bit more weight to it. I think it does. All right. This is Fix It 101 from MPB Think Radio. I'm Lacey Alexander here with licensed contractor Jeff Salmons from Houseworks. If you've been listening and you're wondering where Pam Pibus is, we think she's on the run somewhere. We think she may have fled the country. <laughs> or something um we're so, not sure where she is yeah we don't know where pam uh no in all seriousness uh pam is out this morning with a little bit of an illness keep her in your thoughts um still dealing with a little bit of uh weather this morning folks so just be safe wherever you are stay alert uh april is national safe digging month everybody a failure to call 811 before digging causes damages every six minutes that sounds like an exaggeration oh, no, Jeff. It's, a, it's a big deal that, i'm telling you yeah. that there are a lot of things in your yard even though you may not think they're there <laughs> there there's a utility easement mm. in 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 most uh, yards yeah and if you go to digging you could hit a gas line mm. which could be um detrimental mm -hmm. uh, fatal in some cases <laughs> if it blows up uh you could you could hit a fiber optic cable uh, phone line. There's all kind of things. Power line. There's a lot of things that are under that ground that you do not want to to hit. And calling eight one one is so simple. Yeah. You make that phone call, and if you don't know that number, it is eight one one. It's a free call, and it's the law. There you go. <laughs> so I so. recommend if you're doing a fence, uh, anything. 
call and get those get the locations located. All right. The utilities located. All right. Hey, Lisey, this is uh, producer Liz Gill. I'm chiming in. Hi, Liz Gill. Uh, I just uh, got to go uh, to my mother-in-law's for the eclipse, and we were all excited. We saw all these little flags in her yard. Oh, what's going on? Well, our neighborhood's getting the fiber optic. Oh, nice. So then we go to flush the toilet, and we take a shower, and there's air in the line, and things are backing up. Oh, boy. The installers they, punctured. They, they hit the sewer line. They hit the sewer line. Ooh, yes. all over yeah. town. Oh my goodness! All over town, and it had been uh, things were marked, but so even the even the professionals right. yeah, sometimes right. don't get it right. Well, typically, Liz, the sewer lines are not marked, um, but they there's a it's called a, a as built, which is a a plan, an engineered plan when they put that subdivision in. Um, and you can get a copy of the as built and that gives you some idea of where the other utilities are. Well, this was all yeah, over that, that town. Is, that is so unfortunate. That is annoying, Liz. For everyone. And you had to go see the eclipse without a good shower. <laughs> and then I come home and the power goes out so yes. I have to take, <laughs> so I can right. take a shower in the cold. Well, we finally got some of the hot water, but it was in the dark. <laughs> so if you are a fan of Liz Gill, she's having a tough time. Send Skittles, send something. Thank you, Liz, for, for letting us know. And she's right. Even the pros mess up. So oh, if you're just look. some joke. Schmo, mm-hmm. you better be careful. I assure you, they are human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we all make mistakes. If they're if they're messing up digging, you will, will also mess up digging. <clears throat> Let's take another call, Jeff. This is Becky in Meridian. She has a flooring project she's working on. Becky, you're on the air this morning. What's going on? Hi, uh, we have a. I've called about this about this project, not this particular project, but this renovation uh, project okay. before. But um, new question. So. It's a concrete slab, uh, 50 years old. What type of flooring product do you recommend for uh, putting in a large room that's going to contain both the kitchen area and a wood-burning fireplace? Okay. Um, I love a uh, luxury vinyl plank uh, floating floor. I love them. Okay. They are durable. Uh, uh, they are, let's say, water resistant. Okay. That does not mean I can take the water hose in and I can, you know, put it all over my floor. Uh, so, yeah. so for, for, for that reason, I like them in the wet areas, which would be your kitchen. Um, they, they perform very nice with uh, foot traffic, wheelchair, kids pets mm-hmm. uh and it they're not extremely expensive okay so. and you would recommend on concrete to go with floating instead of glue down um you could do either one but if i'm going to use a an lvp i'm going to do a floating floor if i'm going to do a wood product i would probably glue can't you glue LVP. Yeah, you can, but but there's there's, um, I, you know, there's two different schools of thought on it. They're, they'll 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 have some people say, "Oh no, I want it glued." <clears throat> I I think you get just as much performance out of the floating, uh, and and you save money. Okay. Yeah, the and, glue, uh, glue the glue is is expensive, and the labor to to put it down is is more expensive than doing a floating floor. Now, okay. w- w- when I say floating floor, you're never going to feel it. Uh, you will sense a little bit of hollowness when you walk on it, if you will, because it mm-hmm. you know it's not attached. So mm-hmm. you know it's about a quarter inch off of the off of your exterior walls or off of all your walls for that matter. Uh, so and it does move a little, but not that you would ever feel it. Okay, so and that hollowness, hollowness probably 
contributes to a more toppier kind of sound. When yeah, you're walking on you know, it is so slight that I don't even I don't even recognize it anymore. We we do a lot of it. Um, okay, so. and so there's there's carpet in this room now, but underneath the carpet there is at least one very old layer of tile that underneath that tile that's really thin and we don't know where all it goes in the room because we haven't pulled up all the carpet yet but the what's holding that really old glue uh tile down is that black glue uh, and yeah. that means we have to get it Tested for uh, probably. Um, so, you know, I think I think with knowing that now, I'm definitely doing floating floor. I, I, I do not want to disturb that. Okay. As long as okay. as long as it is glued down nice and it's not coming up, obviously, you're going to pull your carpet. You're going to pull your tack strips. Yeah. Uh, at that point, I'm doing a floating floor. I really am. Uh, and and there, there there's different there's different quality. You can get a excellent high quality luxury vinyl plank. Okay, and and is there a protective coating or something that we can go over that there, tile and over yes. with? Yes, there is normally a moisture barrier that that you would put down, uh, and then you would put your uh, floor on top of that. Okay, so it's not something you paint or brush over no ma'am not no ma'am not that i'm aware of um it's a it's a sheet it's a it's a it looks like a piece of plastic actually okay all right uh some yeah, some is real... some is independent and some is already on the back of the floor okay um and then do you have a uh, time for a septic tank question real quick? Yeah, but I probably can't answer it because I don't know about it, but I'll try. <laughs> okay. I've had, I've had so, one, I've had one septic tank in my life. So. Okay. Well, I've had zero. So you're, <laughs> you're far ahead of me. I, I know more so, than you then. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So we know that we have to replace the septic tank itself and okay. uh, probably the field lines as well. Uh -huh. um, the, one person, one professional is recommending uh, the two tank system, which is like a mini, a mini um, treatment. Yes, thing. yes, a little, and a little bit familiar with that. Yes, and they're recommending that we pump the the treated water up this hill behind our house to disperse it. And that doesn't make sense to me when we could disperse it to the hill that's in front of the house that goes down away from the house. Well, you know, a lot of times, well, in, in every time I've ever been involved in that, the health department dictates how big mm -hmm. that, that field line is. And, and I don't know if they necessarily dictate the location, but they do dictate the amount of space. So has the health okay. department been involved in this? Not yet, but I want to get them. Involved. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Um, are you in Mississippi? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to contact the, the health department and um, find out what, because every time we've done it, they have dictated a lot of how that system works. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you for calling, Becky. We hope we helped you out today. Flooring and septic tanks. There what you a, go. What's something to end on, Jeff? Yeah. Well, Pam, if you're listening, we sure do miss you, but uh, we made it without you. So just so you know, we, we powered through, Pam. I hope you're proud of us. Um, folks, that's going to do it for us this morning. Fix It 101 is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio and is funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you. Our board op is, as always, Marissa Vaughn. For Pam Pibus, who's not here, Jeff Salmons, I'm Lacey Alexander. Stay tuned for our Wednesday 10 a.m. program, Everyday Tech with Abram Nanny, and join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101, only on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Thank you.